I'm delighted to announce that this roundtable, after one year of running this at more than 300 agencies, is officially sponsored by my good friends at Gorgeous. Gorgeous are the number one rated help desk for Shopify merchants and they work with almost 6,000 brands across the globe. Um, in the agency that I ran, Gorgeous were a key part of my tech stack. Um, so this is not a sales pitch by any stretch of the imagination. Um, for me, uh, for all the agencies that I work with, most of them have Gorgeous built in, whether it was through me, through my recommendation or on their own, because it is a fantastic bit of kit. Um, and it, it's such an easy, <laughs> such an easy sell um, when you build it in as part of a retainer model. Um, so I'm extremely grateful to be able to go from the agency world and working with Gorgeous very closely and now in the work that I do with agencies, still having them support me. Um, so anyway, enjoy this round table. Um, the round table here is a, a group of agencies getting together to really share some of their learnings, um, some of their challenges, what's working, what's not working and brainstorm with each other. And at the end of this, I'll follow up with a little bit about how I build technologies into my tech stack and, and how that's a good way to um, bring in a revenue um, commission. I have an agency that brings in about 20,000 euros on a monthly basis just on commissions from some of the tech stacks they work with. So it's definitely a nice little learner if you're doing it properly. Um, so enjoy the round table and I will catch you on the other end. Hi. Hello. Hello. How is everyone? Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. Ross, you were able to make it. Wow. Sunshine. Hello. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Lovely. You came with probably very colorful. <laughs> How is everyone? Good. Good. Very good. Lucas, how are you? That looks like good, I'm in the woods. Clearly, <laughs> we can see that. They have internet in the woods. Yes. This is Brazil. We are the woods now. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's nice. I'm sorry. <laughs> Everybody's good. Has anybody had any little vacations or... Yeah, no. Because he was sitting next to me and next to me. Okay. Anybody had any exciting holidays they've been on? Got anything fun? That'll be a no. It's, it's, it's just inside the... Uh, it's winter yeah, here, so no, not so much. Not so much. Yeah, I need a fucking holiday. That's for damn sure. It's same. Yeah. Okay, let's get started. Um, I have a topic today that I want to talk about. Ross, I'm glad you can come because you have some. I know we. I feel like we talked last year as well about Black Friday retainers, and it's always like a super hot topic this time of year. Um, this time of year, I work with most of my agencies on building out Black Friday Cyber Monday retainers to start um, from to kick off from September, pretty much, because now is the time ready to sell them. Um, but before, hey, Alex. Wow, I didn't see you there. I feel like you disappeared for fucking months. You're, you're, you're not wrong. I've, I've somehow had meetings always pop up during this. Rude. Do you not know better? I can guarantee you none of those fucking meetings are even close to as important as being on this call and, and being able to speak to me. Well, I, I, I will say um, the, the last meeting I was on, you know, given the, the pirate potty mouth, um, it was really funny because I was chastised by um, one of my partners for cursing too much in a meeting. And then literally right after that email where I was chastised, you posted the recording saying like, hey, don't mind the potty mouth. And then I forget who posted. I think it was maybe Ross or somebody else that like posted uh, like, I don't know how you survive this industry without cursing. So it, it, it gave me a nice chuckle. Good. I think potty mouth is probably the politest way of wording it, but that's cute. <laughs> uh, okay, so Black Friday, Cyber Monday, retainers. That is the topic today. I'm having lots of conversations around this at the moment. 
Ross, I'm going to let you kick things off because you have that amazing landing page. Um, and I kind of want to go around and understand from people what they're doing with their Black Friday uh, retainers, what they've worked on, what they've done in the past. Oh, hi, Mike. You might be the only Mike on this call. So we never know. Yes. Mike the Nutter might turn up soon. So <laughs> I know you're talking in now. Cool, cool. Yeah, sorry, I uh, completely unprepared, uh, yeah, which is some, sometimes sometimes good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I was quite intrigued. I've also unfortunately missed quite a few of the the more recent um, of these, um, and I, and I miss them every time. I think you know, like Alex said, something just seems to always come up um, just the the day or the day before of them. But um, I, I'm, I'm actually interested to, I mean, I won't ask the question and expect a response immediately, but uh, you mentioned BFCM retainers specifically um, with BFCM and the gifting season being sort of, you know, a season and, and, and uh, trapped in time. Um, I, we're looking at it as a as a, an acquisition opportunity where uh, at the moment we're, I think as, as a lot of um, agencies are experiencing a bit of a dry spell with when, when it comes to leads. Uh, interestingly, if you asked me a week ago, I would have been a little bit more stressed about it, but we closed, I think, two deals today alone, which is great. Um, but uh, yeah, this whole BFCM thing, I mean, we always try and jump on it as early as possible. Um, I don't know if it's earlier now than we have previously done, but you know it's been about a month or two in the making that we've been sort of working on um, putting something together, and, and we, we we're actually doing a BFCM readiness um, drive at the moment, which which is not around redesigning or necessarily setting up new stores or migrating from a platform or whatever. Not not this time of year. I don't think it's 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 a wise choice, and it's a really unless it's a really small entity. Which we're not really targeting. Um, you know, if it is, maybe that's still fine. But what we're looking to do um, in, is engage with the right merchants that we're looking for, persona wise, um, and do some real valuable work that allows or well, facilitates um, the merchant doing better this year than than they have. Let's. I don't want to say better than last year because last year was, I think, a bit of an anomaly. <laughs> if that'll ever happen again in our lifetimes, I don't know. But um, you know, I've been looking at a few statistics around uh, you know how things have kind of gone down a little bit compared to last year, but they're still big. They're they're still quite significantly up compared to pre-COVID. So people aren't going anywhere. E-commerce isn't going anywhere. Uh, this is a bit of a you know summer effect, I think, where people in northern hemis hemisphere are taking holidays and and not really wanting to engage on anything new. And then they're all going to wake up when they get back to the office and go, oh crap, you know, let's let's get our site redesigned or let's do whatever. So we we've tried to temper those expectations to be more in line with reality. So I got a couple of people on my team to sit down and really like on spec scope out the things that we can realistically do before black friday um with with um you know there definitely is going to have to be a cutoff i mean we're not going to pick up anything in november <laughs> for instance and and ideally we want things done and tested by the end of october so that you know you can code freeze from there and and, and the merchant can then just make minor tweaks focus on content and things like that um but yeah so what we're doing right now pushing quite hard at and um, seemingly succeeding is is pushing for the acquisition of clients. We 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 focus quite heavily on a on a retainer model, um, but most of our good retainers we landed on smaller bodies of work um, initially, and then kind of grew with the merchant. Obviously, it needs to be a certain baseline that you start with, um, either a really a uh, strong prospect in terms of you know them understanding the web and marketing and e-commerce um, and being quite new or somebody that's already doing a fair amount of trade or at least uh, an amount of trade that you can then grow them from. And we find that at a baseline for us about 500,000 years per year, ideally a million plus, um, and, and we can grow them best from there. Um, but at the moment with things being a little bit drier, we, you know, kind of compromising a little bit on our minimums, but um, yeah, I, uh, that's why I say the retainer aspect. I mean, we intend to get these guys in, show them the value of engaging with an agency like ours, um, and then hopefully they 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 stick with us. You know, uh, we, we'll be, you know, our curation process will go through greater and lower 
um, uh, stringent criteria um, as we did Rachel just drop off. Oh no, you just moved across the screen. Sorry. I thought you was <laughs> like the main person. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah. So right now we're, we're maybe a little bit more open than we normally would to taking on things slightly smaller than we normally would. But um, you know, I, since, since the potty mouth thing is, is, has already been raised and it doesn't matter if I swear I've got written in my notebook here, um, humble the fuck up. Because, you know, we had been pushing for really, really, you know, increasing our um, minimums. Um, and, and sometimes you just have to accept that, like, let's just scale things back a little bit, like get those clients in the door, ultimately look at lifetime value as opposed to, you know, initial projects. And we do try and engage with the merchants and work with them going forward. But I know that not all agencies do that. And a lot of guys operate with a lot of churn, um, you know, merchant engages, do the job, maybe never hear from them again. We, we tend to get clingy clients <laughs> that want us and need us and they like us. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's great. Um, so, yeah, I, I, like I say, the retainer aspect of BFCM, I'd be interested to know what you meant by that, Rachel, in terms of like, whether it's acquisition of retainer clients or maximizing the, uh, probably that's probably what it is, is maximizing the relationship. Uh, or, or leveraging the relationship of a retainer client over the BFCM period and getting them ready. That's something that, you know, gives you an opportunity. It just gives you fodder to add things into the backlog, <laughs> improve those product descriptions that have sucked for the last three years, you know, or, mm -hmm. or um, put in that social proof that you didn't have, you know, in, you know, move from the inferior product reviews app that you're using now to something better or, a bunch of things. We've got a huge list. <laughs> um, that link that I sent, uh, it, it gives a reasonably high level thing. It's obviously intended for merchants, but you can have a look there. Uh, we've listed out at a high level the things that we are, are, are able and willing to do in the build-up to Black Friday. Um, and yeah, we won't necessarily do everything for everyone because of time and because some of them won't need it, you know, but that's kind of our efforts. And uh, on our retainer clients, uh, yeah, I mean... We're pushing them to uh, to do the, the the big redesigns. Obviously, that's that's been pushed since last year. Um, but um, I'm trying to think now. M maybe somebody else can contribute to to leveraging the existing relationships. Um, I mean, we we've got like a constant strategy call with our you know, not a constant call, but a, a regular uh, strategy call with the clients. And then, you know, there's certain topics come up, come up again, come up again, then you drop it and, and move on to other things. But um, yeah, invariably some of them will <laughs> in September go, you know, we want to do this big thing. It's like, Oh, you left it too late now. Um, so that's why we're trying to do it as early as possible. Cause we don't really want to do last minute rushes. Um, so yeah, that's about it. Uh, but really welcome to answer any questions anyone has. Before I spend 20 minutes talking about retainers, does anybody have specific questions for Ross? I see Quinton's there. Um, I am curious if you have experience heading into like a renewal situation, like something that's ending in September and then you're looking at Q4 and what that, you know, is, is that an upsell on top of things like here's our normal renewal, but on top of that is a Black Friday, Cyber Monday package or, uh, you know, I, I know you're um, probably working on retainer hours. Mine is kind of more, I, I'm, I'm just a Clavio agency, but I'm, I'm curious that's because I have two clients that are coming to the end. You're not just a Clavio agency. You are a Clavio agency, not just. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. But I'm coming to renewal in September and it's definitely you know, that's where I got my, I got my start last year was I had a lot of Black Friday Cyber Monday experience and brought that to these clients that are now my long-term partners. And they were like, oh, we should work with them long-term, but I'm coming to that renewal. And I'm wondering how that fits into the whole picture. So, so that, that question for me. So um, in terms of renewals, uh, that's like a an interesting time to do it um, given, I mean, uh, firstly, there's the differences between what you, sorry, the, the video um, pictures keep jumping around and I'm losing who I'm talking to, but um, uh, come renewal time, I mean, you, yeah, you can look at an opportunity, I guess. I mean, I'm, I'm more than happy to have anybody else chime in to answer this question, even Rachel, but Thank when it know. comes, yeah, when Very it comes nice. renewal, <laughs> 
when it, when it comes renewal time, I mean, it's, it's, it's an opportunity for you to, uh, to increase it. If there is something to increase it too. And if there's something that, um, you can bring more to the table. I mean, obviously your delivery over the period of the contract that you've had, um, will <laughs> kind of spell, you know, there's, there's, it's easier to sell some to somebody that you sold to before. So if they're feeling the love or feeling the value of the relationship, you, you might be able to get some more out of it, um, potentially increase some of the things that you're doing. Um, what I started saying there was that you do Clavio, we do primarily Shopify and, um, you know, Shopify, kind of has the whole app ecosystem, including Clavio and um, everything else that comes along with it. Um, uh, so you would know better than me in terms of like what those additional things, whether it's more automations or deeper analysis of existing ones and, and how you can better leverage things. So, um, or expanding out into other areas. But I mean, that's that, that comes back to your business and your offering, I guess, where... Um, to us, it's all about value. I mean, we're having a discussion Monday, I think, with one of our bigger clients where they've actually asked for a bit of a slowdown um, and uh, we need to reassess how that can work because uh, I don't want, I'd rather decrease their retainer and have them getting value than um, have them unhappy and feeling that, uh, you know, what we're doing, the amount of hours that are being logged is is not giving them the return, you know. So, um it depends on the health of the relationship as well, I guess, um, would be my answer there. I, I don't know if you're looking for more than that. Maybe Rachel has more. Yeah, no, that's great. Just, Thank you. It's actually interesting because I think Tamara's on this call as well. And I actually got an email pretty much the same from Tamara earlier. Um, she's one of, Tamara's one of the agencies that I work with privately. But she emailed me and said it, pretty much the same thing. Like if I already have a retainer, do I include this Black Friday the FCM offering as part of the 25 hours they already have, or is this an opportunity on top of it? So I would say it's an upsell. That's what I would say, but it really depends on the client and what that looks like, because you're doing a pure play um, email, you're doing email marketing, then I would say in your case, then you would shift over because you're coming to the end of Q3 and going into Q4. I would say that you position your Q4 strategy purely at Black Friday, Cyber Monday, but potentially it's going to be a bigger monthly fee that they're going to be paying you for temporarily. So it really comes down to the clients that you're working with. And in some cases, again, if you're a design and build agency and you have clients that are paying you for design and build, Black Friday. So I'm going to do a screen share. I love a good screen share. I'm going to do a screen share with a, an example of a Black Friday Cyber Monday checklist for full service agencies of different things that you can offer to clients. Um, Black Friday, Cyber Monday is a perfect opportunity for you to acquire new merchants. There's no question about it. And it's a perfect opportunity for you to um, upsell to your current clients as well as bring in new clients. And they are different strategies for both of those different clients. It's a good opportunity for you to take current clients that are paying you on a monthly basis, but are paying you peanuts and put them on a package that is going to be more in line with what they should be spending. I think we've shared this data a couple of times in the group that best practice across the industry is three to 5% of the revenue should be spent on maintenance of the, the merchant's revenue and five to 8% should be invested, not spent, spent is the wrong word, invested in growth. Mike, you're on the growth side of things. So the clients that you're working with, if they're not giving you three to 5%, um, presuming that it's you that they're working with and they're not spreading their resources across multiple different people, which they might be, they might be working with acquisition specialists, but it's just figuring out that five to 8% of growth. How much of that pot are you getting? I'm advising them. I would say it's interesting talking about email specifically. I spoke to a kid today and I'm not being facetious. He literally is a fucking teenager. I spoke to a guy today super amazing guy like he's 19 years of age he started his agency 20 months ago 18 months ago and he's doing 150k a month only on email and he has two offerings doesn't do rev share his price point is super low he's, he's turning like he's churning out with a team of 10 or 12 150k a month because his his packages are so clear and it's like you either get this or you get that and depending on how much revenue you're making you're this price point this price point or this price point and it's as simple as that. Um, where does he get all his business? 100% through LinkedIn. Well, not 100%. I think he gets a couple of referrals here and there, but pretty much he gets five to 10 leads per week through LinkedIn with the content that he pushes out. Um, 
So having a really simplified offering when it comes to Black Friday, in spite of what your um, whatever you're offering at your agency, whether it's a, a Clavio agency, whether it's a CRO agency, whether it's a full service, whether it's dev only, having very, very a clear package of like, this is the game plan for the next three, the three months, two to three months in the run up to Black Friday, September, October, November. This is what you need to do. And we need to do a lot of testing in month one. We need to refine that in Q2 and then do all the final prep in Q3. And tiered pricing, like you need to tier those pricing according to the different types of clients. Um, for me, another question I get asked a lot about Black Friday as well is the audits. Um, and I think that now August is the perfect time to be selling in those audits. If you have a client on a retainer currently, then I would be recommending that you push an audit as part of their current hours um, and say, okay, let me go through and really dig deep into your data and figure out where your opportunities are. So I can create sort of a, a pre Black Friday, Cyber Monday game plan that's tailored to them. It's pretty much all the same across the board for most clients. It's the same, but just different. Um, and that's a good way to kind of just get that foot in the door um, and, and, and get them on to a retainer. I always see most of the agencies I work with, you have the biggest win with your current clients. So it's Black Friday, Cyber Monday, because you have clients that are stuck at like two and a half thousand bucks a month and trying to get them up to a higher amount. But as soon as you say to them, no, 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 this is a, a $15,000 pack, $15, package for three months dedicated to Black Friday. They're like, oh, okay, I can do that. And then it's just 5K a month for three months. Keeping on that 5K a month, once you get results at the end of it, it's not that difficult. You just need to create a use case. So the first agency I ever worked with, I started working with them in July, in August. Within six weeks, we built out a Black Friday, Cyber Monday retainer with some on the back of some of the quick fixes. And they landed their first retainer of 25K a month. And it was a, it was a, a metric-based retainer. So we, we worked back on the numbers and we sold it against what the... Uh, projected ROI was going to look like, uh, which is why the retainer was so high, but it was an absolute winner. Uh, and they still have, it's two years later, and they still have that client. They're still working with that client. Not, he's not necessarily paying the same money because his business has grown so significantly. He's had to hire a big team, so it's taken away some of their service, but they're still on a five-figure a month retainer. I don't know, maybe Jason, I'll bring you in because you've had your agency for a long time and you are full service. And I know that it's not your first rodeo when it comes to Black Friday. Yeah, I wouldn't say we're, we're um, full service anymore, but we used to be, that's for sure. And long time, what do you mean? Are you trying to say I'm old? Uh, no comments. Okay, all right, careful. Uh, yeah, so we, we historically have started talking to our clients in August um, and told them to start getting ready for Black Friday then. And we usually get looked at like, uh, like we're crazy, you know, because uh, nobody wants to plan that far ahead. That's not that far ahead. Um, and so each year I've, I've tried to back it, you know, further back each year um, and, and get no traction. But then it's all of a sudden it's a holy crap moment, you know, Black Friday is upon everyone and they want all these changes made to their website and the email marketing and all the, the planning and stuff. And they want it all to happen immediately. Uh, so in consultation with you and based off your advice, you know, we've, we've turned that into a package now. Uh, and it is uh, not only is it something that uh, that can be is, is more tangible. It can be more bought in um, earlier um, and gives us all something to work on you know, together as we, as we lead up and, and we don't, have, we're not so uh, time bound and it's not so urgent, but it's also uh, an acquisition tool, you know, to, to really approach people and uh, that, you know, it's a finite working period. Um, it's uh, the, the cost is reasonable and everybody uh, gets to find out if you like working with each other. Uh, so, I mean, that's kind of it in a nutshell, but uh, you know, historically, um, We've not had a great response until we started trying to, to package it and productize that, that uh, Black Friday, Cyber Monday service. I'd agree with that. Uh, that's what I was saying earlier about simplifying the offer. The more that you can productize that, what that service and what that offering looks like, obviously that comes down to um, the services that you provide as an agency. Mike, for someone like you, if you're offering only Clavio, it's so much cleaner and so much easier. If you're an agency that's offering dev, design and digital, 
then it's going to be a little bit more broad. It's, I mean, it's not, it's not any more difficult either way necessarily. Um, but the more that you can productize it and say, okay, this is your Black Friday. So maybe I'll, uh, let's hope they don't fuck this up and share them on screen and you can all see like, I've got some YouTube tabs. Okay, here's an example, which I will share an email after just so I can give you an idea of what I'm talking about. And this is something that I worked on Oh, fuck me. Like, I think 2018. I mean, it really is going back a long way. And I've revised this multiple times. Um, but this is just a perfect example. I actually, the agency that I ran, we worked in the same, we worked space as Shopify Plus. They were, of course, on the top floor. And we were the minions with the crumbs in the basement. Um, but we worked pretty closely on this in 2018. Uh, roughly this time, however many years ago that is, three or four, whatever. Um, and this is what the Black Friday Cyber Monday checklist looked like for us. So you have September where it's an analysis and assessment of where they're at, October where it's like really creating their strategy um, in terms of like their content and really planning that out. And November then was really about execution. And here, of course, you have something on the end of it because you still, sales season is running over September and January sales. So we built this out to be a four month package and we charge this out at roughly 20,000 pounds a month. So it's 5K a month. Now you, this is just one example. Again, I'll share this app as I'll share this with everyone after, but this is just one example of what you could do. Um, if you're an agency that works in this particular niche and there's particular technologies that you work with. So in our case, so we worked with subscription businesses. So we worked super closely with recharge. We worked super closely with gorgeous, super closely with loyalty lion, super closely with Clavio. So we then built this out pretty considerably and there was Clavio flows in there. There was segmentation, there was gorgeous flows. There was, um, you know, different flows and different uh, functionalities then that we would build out and test with Loyalty Line, for example. And we could tailor this specifically to the type of merchant that we worked with regularly. Um, and in our case, I think we then created a 2,500 euro or pounds, dollars, whatever the fuck it is, 2,500 audits to go through and actually dig into the data and analyze. And then on the back of it, this was a templated game plan for pretty much every single client. And I think that we had 16 to 20 clients and this was a templated game plan for every single one. And we tailored it ever so slightly according to the outcome of the audit, but pretty much it was the same thing. This was the format we were gonna follow and maybe some of the details, like maybe I didn't need to include social media because they had somebody in house and maybe they weren't doing influencer marketing or maybe their paid ads was elsewhere. So it wasn't with us. And, Maybe they had a copywriter in house, so I would pull that out. Um, but this, generally speaking, was the game plan, and I would then walk, walk them through it. And then we used Monday, but back then it was called the Pulse. So we had a, a dedicated Monday board and basically listed this whole thing out and put dates against it and was like, okay, week one, we're doing this. Week two, we're doing that. Week three, we're doing this. Week four, we're doing that. Um, and so on and so forth, and mapped it out in their entire dedicated board for Black Friday. And that's that's basically what it looked like, looked like. And it was because like Jason said, because it was productized. And again, I'll share this with you after because it was productized. It was so easy to sell. It was a really, really easy solution, a really, really easy package to sell because it was super clear what the deliverables looked like. They, they, there, there was no question there. It's like, you need all of these things. And <laughs> any questions? apart from being extremely blown away. I, I had a little bit of feedback or something to, to add to this. Um, you know, a lot of our businesses that we work with are omni-channel. And so we don't even enter the, the year without knowing what our Black Friday deal is because it has to be shared with the, the, with the retail partners. So we know the discount level. We know all of the scripting that's going to have to be done. The only thing that's really left and what's a variable right now is what's in stock for closeout or for doorbusters. And I think, so this week I've started going to the companies and, and asking them to hold on to closeouts for November and not to, you know, just move them into sale so that we have enough inventory to make the levels that we're going to need in November. And then the second thing I was going to add is one of the things I've been warning merchants against is focusing solely on November and then not having December ready because what starts to happen is every year we have a bigger sale on Cyber Monday and then we have a bigger returns on December one. 
And so we're dragging ourselves out of a hole in December and you can lose the year in December. So what I've been trying to do is make sure to roll in December promotions uh, along with Cyber Week because uh, you can win Cyber Week and lose the year in just a matter of you know, a few weeks in December. So uh, this is best advice there. And what, is, what does it look like from your side then? Because you're working, I mean, your model with the marketing is you're working with clients on an ongoing basis anyway, like they're working with you on a yeah. basis. So how do you then pitch that into them? That's run up to Black Friday. Do you bake it into the packages that you have already or do you add it on top? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I would say we're not in a rush to sell in Black Friday, Cyber Monday. We actually, our job is to execute for all the um, retainer clients. So we're not really using it as a selling period. We're, this is a major delivery period. I guess the only other piece that I've, that I've warned clients about is that um, I pride myself on giving Thanksgiving and Black Friday off here at the agency. And the only way that we can do that is to have everything in the can and done by uh, October 31st or Halloween. So there's no lingering projects uh, in the first couple of weeks of November. Um, but yeah, it's, I'm not selling in, I'm executing against the plan that we've had throughout the year. So for me, I don't like to add any more clients in this quarter because it just distracts from what we're, from what we're doing. It's a nice position to be in. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I would second what, what you said there, Adrian, about um, the, and, that, and that's maybe where I was a little bit, um, in when I started talking, uh, a little bit unsure as to how best to articulate things. But our existing clients, as you say, the, 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 those discussions happened quite a while ago, like what we're going to be doing. Uh, yes, it's likely that some of them um, will come to us with a lengthening the 11th hour. The hour. is like, you know, uh, Sorry, I'm not going to here on, on stage, but what you'll get generally is, is you, know, you, you find a position Sorry. and you hold. Oh, is it a video? Um, so, so uh, broken train of thought there. Um, yeah, so like uh, w w when it comes to the retainer clients, uh, I almost feel like there might be a, a bit of a sour taste by it being perceived as like a, a an opportunistic grab on a retainer client to try and you know up them too much um where we've already got a set precedent in terms of like how much we do and as i say that discussion around you know the gifting season usually happens much earlier in the year even sometimes the you know towards the end of the uh, the, the preceding year so um you know, often those discussions will happen in December, you know, next year, we're going to do more of this, or we're going to do less of that, or whatever the case is. And then throughout the year and the strategy sessions that we have and the amount of time that we have, and that just comes down to good planning, which, which sometimes the merchants lack. Um, but then, you know, that's for us to try and nudge them in the right direction. And, um, you know, some of them will still kind of leave you in the shit to some degree, but you also have the opportunity to say no there where it's, 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 it's not going to work. As you said, Adrian, I mean, exactly the same end of October. If it's, if it's not done and tested by then, like you, 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 you're running risk of, of not having a good um, end of November. Um, we've been there and been burned with it. Um, not, not fortunately, not to the extent of the merchant suffering, but us having to suffer a little bit and work, you know, when we yeah. don't feel like working. Um, so yeah, um, as 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 that uh, as that page that I linked in in, in the chat is like um, what is it proper proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. So yeah. Oh, the seven Ps. Those are my yep. favorite. Yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> I looked up. I tried to get an attribution on that, but I, I couldn't find anything. So I just wrote some British Army dude because that's about as close as I could find. It, 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 we actually help write the map policies for our clients. So um, the biggest trick is as we get to the end of, the, the hardest part is getting the data and performance from November and then trying to have a map policy with the client ready to distribute to all their retail partners in the first week of December that's effective January 1. I, that's our biggest challenge is trying to affect going, you know, 2022 going forward by the end of November. And with a new map policy. Interesting.
Yeah, I mean, the planning ahead for this, it depends again on the type of service. I think to, to what um, Ross said there earlier, for us, we typically find because we were full service, we weren't really full service, we did the design, the dev design and some digital, um, a lot of email and CRO type work. We find that merchants would come to us like at the end of like as soon as uh, back to school season was over, which was September and then Halloween season was over. So like, or preparing for Halloween season around October time, they would start to come to us and be like, shit, we need all this stuff done for Black Friday. And I'm like, I'm booked out for the rest of the year. Like I've already have my rest of the year booked out. I don't have any availability to until January um, because of all those like Q4 projects and that Q4 rush that, that all agencies see. Um, which is why I decided then to put the following year, then put a proactive system in place that around August time, we started having those conversations. Like if you want to be ready for October, November for that sales season, we need to start now. We need to start putting the work in now and have it all tested out so it's ready to rock and roll because I cannot guarantee I'll be able to help you last minute. Um, and, and that's why I put that system in place. And typically I find that's what works much better um, again, it depends. And if Adrian, you're working with merchants on a longer basis um, and you have long standing relationships with a lot of the merchants that you work with, you have all of this game plan and roadmap pretty much mapped out for the entire year, high level. So it makes it a lot easier for you to not have to worry about that Q4 fucking madness that happens in the design and dev world. Yeah, it's still crazy and things change. I mean, like I said, our biggest issue right now is um, what are our door busters or our loss leaders going to be? What are the what are the things that are the deepest discount that we're going to be able to focus on? And so that's the tricky part because um, you always have to have what seventy percent off in the advertisement so that you can get the click, uh, even though if the map policy is really only for twenty percent uh, in line. Um, but uh, but that's why I'm asking folks to. Instead of playing the short game and trying to get uh, closeout sales now, to hold on to the inventory until November, so that we have the amount of merchandise we need to hit the retail goal, and uh, that's really what I'm asking folks to do: is hang on to or collect or go into the warehouse and find those extra bins of stuff that we need to get rid of uh, to make into doorbusters. Matt, what about you? You've been doing this for a long enough time. Your advice on Black Friday, Cyber Monday. I feel like he's trying to respond. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Sorry, I was muted. Um, to be honest, this isn't really my wheelhouse. We're a B2B agency and we do a lot of Magento engineering. So we we do partners we partner with other agencies on the marketing side um one of the things that i'm looking to do is expand horizontally into marketing because some of my clients need it and i don't necessarily want to give up that work if we can keep it in-house but i i don't currently have the the talent to do it so i've been holding off but it's one of the reasons i'm joined this group so this is all really interesting for me to hear Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know that I have anything to add. Okay. I think is the general consensus, I don't know if, I, if this is true or not, but is the general consensus that uh, be it Black Friday, Cyber Monday is largely around marketing. But is that, is that what the general consensus is, Sarkis? Yeah, I mean, from, from, from our point of view, um, we, we've, we've never really done enough, to be honest with you, to leverage on 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 black friday it's it's a definitely a gap in what we do and um, where where i mean i don't know everyone on the call but we're a development agency so we just do core development and and core integration we don't we don't do any marketing or design or anything like that and um, the only rule we really have internally is that we just basically don't do any new development or any big changes for sort of a month before um and sort of two three weeks after um, just to make sure that there's <laughs> no issues with the sites and clients can actually sell and make money. Um, so yeah, I, I guess like the, the previous person that just spoke, sorry, I forgot your name. Um, it's just interesting to see what a lot of, a lot of the agencies are doing and how they do it uh, across Black Friday from our point of view. But I would agree. I think it's mainly, uh, not mainly, but a large part of it is the marketing and making sure that all the tools on your site to help with the marketing are, 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 
are in place and if they're not to upsell that service to obviously increase conversion and stuff like that mm -hmm. across Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Yeah, I mean, I would agree with that. I think Black Friday, Cyber Monday is largely driven by marketing, but as a dev agency, I'll give you one example. I work with uh, one of the top Shopify Plus agencies across Europe and they are a dev house. They, they're a team of 50 something people and 60, 70% of their staff are developers. They do a lot of backend work, amazing work. They work with huge brands like Serena Williams and Floyd Mayweather and like huge businesses. And Black Friday, Cyber Monday, I think not last year, but the year before, they had built they had built um, some middleware that kind of sat between this custom built inventory system and the Shopify Plus store. And this middleware was maybe two or three years old and they had an SLA on it, but the SLA was a super low SLA. You will maintain it if you have any problems, just let us know. Unfortunately, the merchant, not unfortunately, the merchant grew pretty significantly over the last two years, and this middleware was not an issue. And because they'd grown so significantly, they decided this Black Friday, Cyber Monday, they partnered up with a marketing agency, of course, didn't communicate it with the dev agency, and the marketing agency had made a recommendation that they would pump $250,000 into acquisition for Black Friday, which is amazing. Obviously, they're doing really fucking well if they can pump that much money in. It broke the app. <laughs> then the yeah. app then died because obviously there's no way when you build these apps, you build these apps that you can allow. So I think it was like 10 people or a hundred purchases or something like that. There was a maximum limit, like a hundred, a hundred transactions a minute or something yeah. like that. You pump yeah. 250 K into acquisition. You need a fucking a hundred a second. You don't need a hundred a minute. So the yeah. app died. Now they find out, they told them immediately and the dev agency, they jumped on it um, and then they, they worked for a couple of hours and got it all fixed. And it was out of action for a couple of hours, but it was fine. And then the merchant tried to sue them for half a million euros for lost revenues, projected yeah. lost revenues. Um, obviously the merchant didn't win and uh, ironically the merchant is still working with them, um, but tried to sue them for lost revenues. From a dev point of view, as a dev agency, what should have happened because they were so insular and like, okay, we just do dev and this is our world. What they should have been doing is they should have proactively reached out to their merchants beforehand and be like, what is your game plan for Black Friday? What is it you're yeah. doing? Because Black Friday is a really crazy time of year, especially taking into consideration this weird kind of COVID and some industries up and some industries down. This is the time where people make the bulk of their money. Yeah. So it really is the obligation of the agency to go back to all of their clients and be like, what's up? What have you got planned? What's your game plan? How does that yeah. interact? Working with the marketing team? Okay, put me in touch with that marketing team and let me figure out from our side what we need to do so to support their efforts that you might not have visibility on because the merchant yeah. almost won't. The merchant would never have known. It was a, you know, it was a perfect storm in a teacup. The merchant would never have known yeah. pumping that amount of money was going to break the app. But if he had put the agency in contact with the marketing team, they would have been like, oh, fuck, the app's going to break. Let's get ahead of this. Yeah. yeah. So even if the marketing agency, there absolutely is work there for you to do. And it's your responsibility rather than just to be on the receiving end of that, to be proactive and be like, what is it you're working on? How do we need to yeah. do that? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent agree with that. I mean, we we started doing a bit more of it sort of about twenty four months ago. You know, between eighteen and twenty four months ago, because we do a lot of integration work. Uh, we we we've been able to sort of upsell the service of the client coming back to us and going. It, it went crazy over Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Our SAP wasn't integrated. The warehouse lost order. You know, all the stuff that's integrated with the delivery of the products to the customers it basically fell apart because it was never integrated properly on, you know, on sites that we've taken over from, from other agencies, et cetera. So there's definitely been, we've definitely realized over the last 12 months that there's that, there's that to upsell the service of making sure all the systems in their business are talking to the website harmoniously and working well. Um, and, and because we do integration a lot, we found that we've been able to upsell that, but we're proactively looking at other areas where we can, we can upsell, uh, efficiency, I guess, on, or, or new functionality on, on e-commerce sites to not only help with Black Friday and Cyber Monday, that obviously is the upsell because we want to make sure that they're not stressed out and just focus on selling. Um, but it allows it allows a lot more work to be planned in the client as well. Nice. Anybody else who's doing anything or has done anything specific around Black Friday or has specific questions. I know Sean, Sean's on the call, so I feel like he always is super inquisitive. 
I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I think it's fine. All right. Um, no, I, I'm not doing anything currently. You better believe after this call I will be. Um, my initial question was what's the difference between a typical growth retainer and a, a Black Friday, Cyber Monday retainer? Um, but you pretty much answered that and offered it in the, the handout that you said you'd give us. So I really don't have any questions other than if there's anything that anything else anyone could share to set us up for success, by all means, I'd love to hear it because this is definitely something that uh, we as an agency will be doing this year, starting probably two days from now when I start my outreach for it. Okay, that's the correct answer. I feel like you felt under pressure there and you were being tested. But you, you performed well. That's fine. You performed well. Don't you? Well, thank you. Okay. Um, to answer your question very simply, what is the difference between a growth retainer and a Black Friday, Cyber Monday retainer? Pretty much fuck all. There is no real difference. It's just putting something a little bit shinier um, on top of it um, to make it more fitting uh, with the season and easier for the customer or the merchant to actually digest. So there really is, I mean, in some cases, there probably will be some differences depending on the merchant because there's some merchants where, like Adrian mentioned, you know, maybe there's going to be a stock issues or there's a particular stock item that always sells and that's a hot seller. And you're going to have to say to the client, you know, you need to ease off on sales with this. So you make sure you have your inventory, maybe there's something specific around shipping or tracking or some issues that they have their end with the customer end of purchasing a product and how they receive their products and how that's communicated to them. So maybe there's more specific things there, but generally speaking, calling something a Black Friday, Cyber Monday retainer is just a fucking, you're just polishing a turd. You're just putting a little bit of glitter on the turd to make it more digestible for the client that you want them to pay you money on a monthly basis. Is really, and I don't want to sound like an asshole, but it is what it is. Because at the end of the day, I'm going to give you this fucking shiny, glittery turd, and you're going to buy it, and we're going to do this for four or five months, and we're going to dance, and then I'm going to then lock you in for another year or so. Um, that's ultimately what it is. It may be more specific uh, over BFCM to a lot of like the discounts and getting loyalty schemes set up and the creative around what your discounts look like and how that's communicated and the promotional strategy around that. But apart from that, it's a fucking growth retainer. I don't, I don't want to like demystify and you know, ruin the facade and, and downplay it, but it is what it is. It's just another name for selling the same thing, basically. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, yeah. I will say in year one and two, and even in year three, we used it as a way to open the door because the anxiety from the client around being ready for Black Friday, Cyber Monday, allowed us in the door to get a recurring contract. But now that we're more mature, I actually stay away from those folks who, who are just only want you in November because those are the ones that are the hardest to turn around and to, and to, uh, to execute on in this short window. So, you know, if, if you don't have it sold by the end of this month, it's almost, you got a month of planning, a month of execution and, and November's here tomorrow. So I, I actually, that's why I stalled out on doing Black Friday, Cyber Monday pitches. I actually tell people we're sold out for quarter four and we can start you in January. Uh, and then, um, and then that, that makes sure that our retainer clients get all our bandwidth during the most important time. We're on a rev share too. So we need good revenue because this is our biggest pull for the year. Um, so yeah, I've actually kind of stopped using that myself as a door opener, but in the early years, it was an easy way to, to get the conversation started and get somebody on a year round retainer. But those were the hardest <laughs> for us. Uh, sure. to bolt on in a short term. You leave it till Q4 to start having these conversations. It's too late. And if you're in a situation yeah. where you're selling for your next meal instead of your next harvest, then yeah. you're in a fucking sticky situation and you're going to bring in shitty clients and they're going to fuck you up and you're going to hate it and you're going to go yeah. depressed. You're going to eat loads of fucking turkey, start the new year super fast mm -hmm. and you're fucked up. Like it just ruins everything. I think, yeah. Like w where we're at at the moment is um, sort of an unprecedented, I that word at the moment, but unprecedented time in the sense that our agency is now almost seven years old. Uh, it's the first time that we've experienced like what we're experiencing right now. And it's, there's a combination of factors. 
one is growth and like growing pains in and in, in, you know people joining people leaving and whatnot like on our team um and then we also <laughs> rather stupidly, uh, although they needed to go, got rid of about three clients in the course of about three months as well, which kind of, actually, I can't say that because I was going to name the client there, but we, we, we've got a, an A hole to fill. <laughs> um, a That name client hole to fill, you know, and uh, and and to others. You know, they, they were trouble, troublesome clients and we needed to get rid of them. So to some degree, there was a, there's been a bit of a reset and it's, it's, it's quite nice in a way, quite liberating in a way and quite scary in a way, in the sense that um, we do need to now get back to where we were about a year ago. So Adrian, what you mentioned about, uh, you know, not uh, pursuing those, you know, I think it's early enough for, for us to be doing so and setting the right precedent and setting the right expectations. We're hoping that we'll be able to do that with these merchants, given that it's now um, uh, only uh, August um, and, uh, and, and, and turn them into the good ones. I mean, if they come to us in November, there's uh, oh hell no, you know, but um, I think now is still okay. And we're, we always put a little bit of BFCM into our marketing Come whatever month it is, rather early in the year. Like I almost take pride in the fact that we're the one of the first guys to start talking about it. It's almost like the guy that puts the Christmas tree up or the decorations in the mall, mall that pisses everyone <laughs> off because it's too early. But um, yeah, like we 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 try and start that conversation as early as possible. But um, this time around, we're doing it for actual acquisition of clients as opposed to um getting our existing clients to just do better you know we, we've done that every year for the last few and this is the first time we need to land some more you know and like i say very happy we landed pretty much two over the course of the last two days which is great and we we've really been forced to go back to the drawing board in terms of our own marketing which is quite cool as well to see where we're at like the our site has grown the traffic has grown like i was forced to look through all our leads for the last six months and how many we were getting per, on average and like figuring out exactly what our conversion rate is on them um it was quite interesting and you you kind of become complacent and you don't you don't look at that when you don't need to but I think that when we get back to where we were last year, um, we're going to be much stronger because we're forced to like re like spring clean those things. Um, and um, we know exactly how much traffic we need to convert as long as we're getting the right traffic into, into enough work to fill X number of people's plates and for the company to be profitable, you know? So, I mean, we're, we're in a, in a strange first time in, in six and a half or seven years that we've, we've had to do that. I mean, when we started out, it was like, we would do sub one hour jobs, you know, bill for an hour. Then that became half a day. That became a day that became a week. Then that became $25,000 minimum for the projects. And now we kind of, and that's where that whole humble the fuck up thing comes where it's like, okay, some of those clients that are now well in the hundreds of thousands of dollars of lifetime value, they started on a $3,000 job, you know, I did an analysis of themes or I did a something small, you know, and we hooked them in. They seemed nice. They were proper businesses. They were doing decent revenue. Uh, we demonstrated our value and, and, and we grew with them, you know, some of them proved to be a bit crazy. So we let them go and now we're de dealing with the, with, you know, the optimization and reacquisition of new good ones. So yeah, Adrian, I, I would love to have, to be in your position today. We were there last year, but we're not now. So we have to like get back to, back to basics and, and hustle a bit, you know? I think it's really easy. I see this with a lot of agencies as they get a bit older. It's really easy to kind of lose sight of the 101 of your business and what you need to be doing, especially when the last 18 months, this industry has seen a massive flood of opportunity and just new clients and growth. And I think the statistic is that the e-commerce agencies are growing on average 30% year on year um, based on what's happened with COVID and the pandemic. So it's really interesting to see that. And Ross, I will say that the group of agencies that I work with very closely, June, especially July, were fucking hard months, people, because it's like you've just come out of COVID. A lot of people sort of can travel a little bit more now. I feel like every time I send an email, I got like 20% out of offices. Like I'm on vacation. I'm just like fucking hell. Anybody actually working right now? I feel like everybody's on vacation and I'm fucking breaking my balls here, putting 100 hour weeks and everybody's just chilling. And I live next to the beach. So it's very annoying. Um, 
but th this last couple of months have been tough for a lot of agencies. Um, I had an agency that did like a 30, 25, 27% loss last month. Now they've made that back in the first week of, of this month because this is when time things start to pick up, but it was tough. Um, so it really makes you take a step back and, and really look at the numbers and evaluate and be like, where are my best referrals coming from? And one thing I will say, so I did, I did a post on LinkedIn, it, I don't know, last month or a few weeks ago, I can't quite remember when, but it was, a, I was having a conversation with one of the agencies I worked closely with, Avex in New York, uh, with John, and we were talking about different agency sizes and the challenges they have at different sizes. It's a really interesting topic. Um, and it was really, really interesting to see that as those agency sizes change and your problems change, you kind of lose sight of a lot of the stuff that you did in the previous phase. And if you don't maintain that, you'll quickly find yourself going back. Um, so I think that's something to be super mindful of. And before we finish, this is just a small rant from me. Um, and I feel like anybody here who's in the group that actually runs and owns an agency, I don't know what the fuck is going on with your employees right now. Like your employees are, the agencies that I work with and the employees that I'm coaching one-on-one, -on -one, they're fucking killing me. Like they are, I just want to like, I just want to send contracts to most of my agencies to get, what is it called? Like authority or what do you call it when you hand over your fucking rights? I just want to get authority to fucking hire, fire half of the employees of all the agencies because everybody's turned into a fucking pussy. Like I'm exhausted. I had somebody telling me the other day that they were triggered because of a message, a Slack message that went out at nine o'clock at night and it really triggered their emotions and they cried for two hours about it because it really stressed them out. And I'm like, oh. do, you, do you want to hear, do you want to hear a funny story? Um, two team members on my side won't say who, uh, three, well, actually three of them were in a call and the one team member was being frustrating so the other one sent a message to the other one and she was sharing her screen and the message came up saying, I've had just about enough of this person. Uh, so last two days has been quite dramatic with apologies being <laughs> forced. Yeah, we, we call that we, we call that a Freudian click. When, when, yeah, yeah. It's the same as sending a client a client an email accidentally, like, please can you deal with this guy? He's such a dick, you know. <laughs> and, and you send it to the clients. Oh, whoops. <laughs> you can't undo it. Uh, yeah, all these. <laughs> um, of, maybe it's a full moon, I don't know, but there is a lot of that stuff going on at the moment. I think they said that like Q3 and Q4 is going to be like the great the grand resignation where loads of people are resigning because it's it's an employee a employee market right now. About a handful of my agencies where one of the guys who was, I'm not exaggerating, he was doing fuck all work and he came to the business owner and said, yeah, I, I'd like a pay rise by double. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? Where do you think we're going to pull up money from? Like, going like to start fucking singing for our supper so we can fucking pay you double the salary? Like, it doesn't make any sense. It's a lot of, like, it really is the um, in, in, in employee market right now. And it's exhausting. Like, the sense of the... It's not across the board because I work with some amazing employees of agencies and really, really amazing people. And there's a percentage of them, half, who are whingy little fucking cunts. And it's just exhausting. Like, I just, I just want to have fun. So it's just it's my small rant. I've had this rant twice a day. And I feel like I'm getting it out of my system. But Can I, can I pipe in here for a second? You guys mind? Go this is Matt. It. I just wanted to follow up on what Ross was saying about losing a couple clients and just to share my, we had to go through this. We fired our biggest client about four years ago. It was super nerve wracking, but I just felt in my heart that it was the right thing to do. I had to prune a limb essentially. So the, the tree could be stronger mm -hmm. and metaphorically, obviously. And that was super, super helpful. And I think that the pruning happens sometimes on the staff side too. You know, I think in order to have a healthy culture and a healthy business, you need to keep the whole, the whole thing in perspective. So I can, I could feel your, your anxiety, but for me in the end, it was a good experience and it was positive and it, and my, it made my business better. And I think it made me better and, and it made our culture better. And then, um, you know, Adrian, I, I wanted to thank you for what you were saying about the planning. Cause you, I was going to ask these questions and you nailed the answer, which is how do I prepare myself to get into marketing for some of my clients. And I think that 
my what I was going to ask is, do we have to get started now if we're going to get into doing, you know, Cyber Monday planning? And I guess your, your answer was obviously yes. And now I'm thinking I need to do planning so I can get into this in 2022 and even forget about adding it in as a service this year. I think I need to prepare my business for an entire quarter or two before I, I jump in and then, you know, take some baby steps with it. We did it before we were full service and that was part of that pruning. Uh, we decided to go more into engineering and stay focused vertically, but um, I just wanted to thank you for your input on that. And I'm done. I'll, I'll accept your thanks for Adrian on his behalf because he's gone. But I yeah, thank, thanks, Matt. Um, yeah, yeah. We, 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 we have got rid of clients in the past and, and some of them were were definitely good prunings and uh, it's, it's the big ones that sting. Huh? Mm -hmm. um, but you, you get over it. I know, I know, yeah, I know. It is, it is a necessary <laughs> evil of agency growth and it's really a good sign of, of health of an agency. And, and I would say as well, Matt, to your point, <laughs> I don't want to sound like a Nazi here, but firing employees is the fucking best. Like, it is fantastic sometimes <laughs> it's a bit of, like, bad employee. Um, and I was, again, having a conversation with some of the more experienced, bigger agencies. And one of the biggest turning points for their agency was getting one or two good hires. And it really separates the wheat from the chaff. And you can see the people that are just dead weight. And they're just there just to, like, get a paycheck and go through the motions. And it really separates people out. Um, and I've over the last two months, I've had to manage out maybe four or five people in agency. So I am able to fire people, but just not as quickly as I'd like to be able. I'd like to just have written consent for me to just go to an agency and say, by the way, I just fucking fired your project manager. Just thought you should know. I will hire you a new one, but he had to go or she. But I, I haven't got that far. Um, um. I, I think I laughed inappropriately there, but I think uh, what, what I thought you meant was that firing was is the best thing as in you like really enjoy it. But I think you meant that it, it's the best thing to do for your agency in terms of health. It eh? is, but it is, yeah. it is incredibly cathartic because the thing is, if you look at it right, so I said, gave you the example of like, there's one agency and there's so much fucking drama going on there. And with my work that I do in this particular agency, I work very closely. I invested 15 hours of my time in an agency that is six, seven, eight hours behind me. So my evenings, my weekends, facilitating and neutralizing these fucking grenades that were going off that had fuck all to do with money and profit and revenue and growth of an agency. And it was 100% emotions and feelings and fucking snowflakes and cupcakes and all this poor shit that's got nothing to do with the growth of the business. It's not driving us forward. And at some point, somebody needs to put their balls on the table and say, I'm not fucking dealing with this anymore. This is horseshit. This is your own personal stuff. Take it outside of work. If you guys can't play together in the sandbox, go and find different sandboxes. I just need you to get the fucking work done. Um, now, in this particular instance, what will happen if things are not corrected is somebody will be fired because they are at the center of all of this noise. Um, and, and that's the frustrating thing. So sometimes it's incredibly cathartic to just be like, We've wasted so much energy. I mean, everybody knows when you have a bad employee and you pour so much effort into them and you try and coach them and you try and train them and they couldn't give a flying fuck. And then you have another employee that you just give like one drop of water and they blossom into this amazing sunflower. And I think to myself, okay, as a business owner, are you going to invest 15 gallons of water into this person who's dead? Or are you going to put half of that into somebody that will be 10x if you just invest half? Like, what's the smartest thing for you to do as an agency? You just cut the dead wood and invest that time into somebody that's really going to take something from it. And it's frustrating for the reason I get so annoyed. And so I just want to go, like, on Friday night, I said to my husband, if there was a fucking, if there was somebody outside that was willing to fight me, I would have fucking loved it. I would have loved to just go out and wrestle somebody in the street because I was so fucking frustrated. I just, I just get really fighty when I'm angry. Um, and it's just about, as a business owner, of course, you need to play the role of being that father paternal maternal figure with your team but at the same time you can't be a fucking pussy you can't be a pushover whether you're an agency owner or a leader in an agency you cannot be a pushover because ultimately you end up enabling your team and then i'm on the other set other end of it listen to all this horseshit being like well this has got zero to do with any of the goals that we have to grow our agency this is bringing zero value in fact it's actually detracting um, so it's about making that decision, which is never pleasant. So even though I'm being facetious and saying, I love firing people, sometimes I do love 
actually having that final being like that person is leaving their final day and i'm like thank you jesus this is get the fucking dom perignon out it's time to celebrate this is the best thing that ever happened to this agency and even though there's going to be a little bit of a dip we're going to come back stronger because it's just drained so much energy so anyway rant over i'm just saying like if if, if you the agency owners i'm working closely with if you guys let your fucking team i'm gonna you're gonna fucking hear it from me i just want everybody to just <laughs> not enable their employees to be big whingy fuckers because it's exhausting i'm fucking tired of it so. I feel like mm -hmm. tamara can you hear me yeah yeah i think that employee is the foundation i mean before having clients before selling retainers if we don't have a strong team nothing will work and as we want good clients first we need to have good employees and i think that you know how much i uh, struggle with this stage right now because it's so hard to find good person it's very easy to find bad employees but it's really difficult to find the good one that capable to, to stay with you for the long term and grow with you the business. And yeah, I know that we have a meeting tomorrow, but <laughs> it's just, you know, it's, I think it's, this is the most difficult uh, thing for me to, to do right now, more than sales, more than everything. I think that once I be able to have a strong team, then I will be more confident to, to sell whatever. And once I still, when I don't have this, I like, you know, 50% in, 50% off. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't have the 100% of confidence mm -hmm. uh, that everything is working smoothly because there are project managers that she is excellent. And the other ones, other one, okay. So, it's like, it's not optimized, like we say in the website. It's like, it's not yet optimized. And when it's not optimized, I'm just wonder, uh, I go a lot in the, in, the, in, the, in the last month, but I'm just thinking to myself, I know that it's Black Friday, the period of time. I know that it's our time to grow, but also it's our time to take, to see inside the business uh, if, maybe it's better to 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 deal with the team uh construction uh rather than focus on sales sales sales, sales. so i would like to know what you think about it and in general um because this is what i feel right now i feel that i i really really needed to to have these solid uh team members so i can be more confident uh to, to sell and to, to not to do things myself also. I would like to, of course, to, 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 to be able to, to delegate everything because as agency owner, we are not supposed to do things for clients, not at all. Um, yeah, and I've got actually, I'm collaborating with a couple of the agencies. I'm doing a webinar at the, in a, a couple of weeks, not next Friday, the Friday after. And for me, that's really the three key pillars across the board are the three key elements of any agency. It's your people, your process, and your profits. And if you don't have all three of them in place, then you really can't scale effectively. Um, and it really does uh, start and stop with, with the right people. And I think when you're less than 10, you can afford to have people, like when you're less than 10 people, everybody's very scrappy. And generally speaking, people are fairly scrappy and it's kind of that kind of startup sort of mentality. I come from the startup world, so I know that that like, hustle and wearing many hats and I know what that looks like and as the agencies tend to get a little bigger then you tend to have people that are it's some people that are rock stars and they just set the world alight and other people that are just like steady eddies and other people that are just total fucking floaters um and those people they just need to be culled and they'll show themselves pretty quickly but as a business owner um as an agency owner you need to be prioritizing the quality of your team the disconnect I see with a lot of agency owners and I'll end on this 
you're not holding your team accountable. You're not actually documenting and communicating effectively what the expectations are of those team members. When you start off an agency, you have people that come in and they're doing many different jobs. And as they then, as your agency gets bigger, you then push people into key areas. So maybe this person heads up delivery and this person is the champion for retention and this person is the champion for whatever, fucking development. But their role has changed so significantly. So the job description that you hired them on is no longer valid for the work that they're doing now. And it's having the due diligence to actually go back to that employee and go down and say, these are my expectations. This is how I'm going to be measuring your success moving forward. And I think by doing that, and that's exactly the example, you know, this, this thing that fucked me up last week that made me want to punch people, um, that you look at the team and it's grown so significantly. There are over 50 people. It's really grown a lot. There's a lot of moving pieces and we haven't actually had the time to sit down and redefine what the responsibilities look like and what the expectations are for people in the role. So everybody is stepping on each other's toes and then people are getting fucking triggered and getting upset and getting all cry and complainy and getting entitled and I want more money if I'm going to have to work with that guy and all this sort of horse shit, which is fine. Like I get it. I don't want to sound like I'm totally like I don't care. I do get it. It's exhausting. Um, and really, it's our responsibility as leaders to put that expectation and communicate that effectively. That's our job. And if we're not doing that, it's on us. If we have a team of people and they're all big crybabies and they're all complaining, we fucked up. Um, so it, it absolutely needs to be a priority. And if you end up having to fire people, then you made a mistake and you hired them wrong. Because very rarely will somebody, will the, the math slip. Um, and you're like, oh my God, this is like a totally different person than I expected. Nine times out of 10, all the red flags are there. You just didn't see it or you overlooked it because you were desperate. Same with clients. When a couple of little snakes get through the net, then it's like, this guy's going to be an asshole. But tomorrow, we're like, like you said, we're talking tomorrow anyway. So we'll go through that in a little bit more detail. But you really need to, prioritizing the actual people that you have in your team is critical. Absolutely critical because it will make or break your agency. Right, uh, I've kept everybody over for another 50 minutes. Oh, uh, getting the good uh, now because the sun's going down so I look like an angel, uh, <laughs> which does not match up with all my swearing. Jesus would not be pleased. Anyway, I will love you and leave you all. I am going to send you a follow-up email with the recording for the people that couldn't make it today. And I'm also gonna send you that document um, that I shared earlier. And I've got a handful of other documents as well. So I'll pull, over, pull out anything that's relevant. If anybody in the group is preparing Black Friday Cyber Monday retainers, then send it over and let me take a look and I'll give you some sort of guidance. And I'll also send you over the link for the webinar that I'm doing in a couple of weeks with John from Avex and Darren from Irish Titan, just to kind of go through those three pillars and what they've done with their agencies to make sure that their people are good and their process is good and their profit is good. They're gonna run through some of their solutions and frameworks. Are we all good? Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks, thanks, uh, thanks again. Good session. Thanks everybody. Thank you, take care everyone, bye. bye. Take it easy. Bye. 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 bye bye. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that round table. As promised, I said I would finish up at the end with just a little bit more about how I build technologies into my tech stack with my agencies and more specifically how that can work with Gorgeous. So if you don't know a little bit about Gorgeous, overall they, they massively streamline the customer journey. Um, they, the, the technology automates about 20% of FAQs, um, which it's there to help uh, reduce support costs. Uh, and all of that stuff combined is a fantastic way, a proven way to increase customer loyalty. If you know anything about what's going on in the industry right now, loyalty and retention is one of the top topics um, in e-commerce. Um, so anything that is built around that topic of retention and retention marketing, which you've probably heard a lot about, um, in my experience, um, we perfect example. We had a brand that we worked with that were um, very busy brand. Very, they grew Instagram brand grew very very busy, and we worked directly with the ecom manager. And I could never get stuff through to her. I was constantly chasing her all the time, just constantly chasing her. And I would take her out um, for lunches and dinners and drinks, and I'm like, what 
what's going on Zoe? I'm constantly sending these messages, I'll never hear back. And she said, I am balls deep in support, dealing with customer support and dealing with like returns and inquiries and blah, blah, blah. Um, and I was just like, oh, okay, uh, let me figure out a solution that's gonna work. So I, then I found out about Gorgeous um, and I introduced Gorgeous, the technology into that brand. And it was a game changer for me, building retainers around the clients. It was a game changer because I was able to push things through with this e-com manager so much easier and quicker. And after that, a bit of a light bulb went off and I was like, okay, this is gonna be a key part of my tech stack for the clients that we're working with. And I put that when clients moved from projects into retainers, I recommended that. Very few of them said no, to be honest. It was a really easy sell. It's not really a sell, it's a recommendation. Um, and it was a game changer. Uh, so not only that, anybody who knows Gorgeous will tell you that. They're great partners. They're, they're a fantastic team. They're super good fun. In fact, I have uh, one of the team coming over next month to join me at a retreat I'm hosting here in Grand Canaria. So that should be super cute. Um, and additionally, uh, one of my agencies actually uses the technology for their inbound uh, inquiries and uses it pretty effectively. So there's lots of different uh, use cases for this, more than perhaps what people realize. It's more than just help desk or support. Um, if you're working with brands and you're working with them on retention and increasing uh, loyalty and branding, I would say you should give this a crack. So at the end, there'll be, there'll be slides at the end of this now um, with some of the partner information. If you want to know any more about them, again, this is not a sales pitch, this is a genuine recommendation because I have worked with them for years, as do a lot of my brands. Um, give me a shout and I'm happy to make an introduction or there should be a link here that you can go and just sign up and get on a call with them. See ya.